In 1960s New York, when police could target and punish LGBTQ plus people for simply existing, the Stonewall Inn was a safe haven for the queer community. In 1969, a resistance against anti-gay police raids made Stonewall the birthplace of the modern LGBTQ plus rights movement. Tree Sequoia was there the night it started in 1969, and he's now worked as a bartender at the Stonewall Inn for over 30 years. I want to say cheers, because this is like the biggest honor to be here with you and to have you even serve me a drink is an My honor, pleasure. so thank you. This has been, you know, a legendary place for me. I came in here for the first time when it was the original Stonewall in the 60s. We only came to bars to dance. Mm -hmm. We just hung out all night long. Right. We didn't have safety, we just had hangouts. You, you sleep with a guy and he becomes your friend. Mm -hmm. And then he introduced you to his friends, and the next thing you know, there's eight or nine of you, ten of you. It's a family. It's a family. Yeah, I feel like that was a theme, especially back then, of a lot of homeless LGBT people could come into places like this because it was safe. Parents of the old days actually threw their children out with the clothes they were wearing when they found out they were gay. Police raids at gay bars were common, but on June 28th, 1969, the patrons of Stonewall decided to fight back a riot that led to the start of the modern LGBTQ plus civil rights movement. All of a sudden we hear screaming and everything from the other side. We saw the cops coming and pushing and shoving, but we started fighting back, hitting the cops, pushing everybody. As they were arresting people, putting them in the paddy wheel, everybody was booing and hissing and calling the cops names. And the crowd got bigger because people that looking out their windows had to come and see. The word got around and everybody was coming from all over and they were shaking the cop car. They pulled a parking meter with concrete on the bottom and everything and battered the doors over there. And the lesbians in there were lighting their pillows and pillowcases and throwing them out the window screaming, come on girls, fight back. Gay people ascended into the streets and openly resisted the harassment and criminal exploitation of their community, oppressions which they had long endured in silence. Rich, poor, drag, butch, gay stood together and fought the mass act of resistance. Three and four days after that were even more impactful, getting everyone out in the mm -hmm. streets. Thousands of people came down and really stood out here, and that's really what sparked it. And what they did afterwards really to affect how people were treated um, years later and to this day is just so impactful. Right. And it's crazy to know that it all started right in this moment. The younger generation have no idea what we went through to give them what they have. Yeah. Now, they have a hundred percent more than I had when I was a, a gay guy coming to the village in the 50s and 60s. We had nothing. A lot of the younger generation had no idea what happened. They had no idea that people like Tree even existed. Right. A lot of people across the country were like, Stonewall, it sounds familiar, but they didn't know. How are we going to work to bring that all back? It is the birthplace of gay rights. If gay bars are the church, you are in the mega church. This is where Pride began. Right. The reason why we have Pride parades all over the country in the United States happened at this bar in 1969. In fact, to this day, a lot of the old generation, they don't call it a parade, they still call it a march. Right. Because we're marching for our rights. Mm -hmm. I'm designating the Stonewall National Monument as the newest addition to America's national park system. Stonewall will be our first national monument to tell the story of the struggle for LGBT rights. I think about every little kid like me in Kansas, yeah. every little person across the country that had such a difficult time and it's going to be like, oh my God, our president is acknowledging us. Like the leader of the free world is like, you know, we have bullies and people that make fun of us and whatever. He's saying it's okay to be gay. Yeah. I think if you come into Stonewall any given night, you will see everybody. You will see the trans community coming here. You will see people of color coming here. You will see gay, you'll see lesbian. It really is the melting pot like New York City of right. the world. And knowing that, yes, um, you know, trans women of color who are absolutely the most marginalized and the group within our community that's the most in danger right now that we need to stand up and support or the ones who led the way for us yeah. back in the day. Janet Mock is a trans activist and author who is at the front line of the fight for LGBTQ plus equality, now almost 50 years after Stonewall. 
For me, so much of my work is about paying homage to my forebears, to all of the people who have sacrificed their bodies, their livelihoods, their everything in order for me and our communities to be able to do the work and to be seen and heard on the levels that we're seen and heard. And so for me, when I think about 1969 and I think about the Stonewall Rebellion, I think about Marsha P. Johnson, I think about Sylvia Rivera, and I think about Miss Major Griffin Gracie. Largely young people, poor people, um, LGBTQ plus people who were out there and put their bodies on the line in order to say that we will no longer be contained, we will no longer have our sexualities and our genders policed, we will no longer have you telling us what we should do and how we should live and who we should love. They were like, fuck this. Right. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna turn this all the way up, we're gonna get some Molotov cocktails, some bricks, and we're gonna throw back. They had so much less, so much less resources than we have had access to resources, yet they still went out and changed, really changed the world. I always say that activism is not this one performative space, right? The, the picket line, the, the protest, it is in the everyday acts of when you hear something going on and you hear problematic language that you check it, mm -hmm. that you use your privilege and your access in the spaces that you've been given, been granted to, 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 to make sure that people think differently and that you don't let this stuff go by because your people are all people. Right, and that though you may be different, though you have different experiences, it is your job to use the education that you have taken on to, to hopefully uh, resist every single day. This was founded on resistance. This was founded on standing up. This mm -hmm. is what Stonewall represents. Smash back, stand up against resistance. So you have an opportunity once in a lifetime to really make a difference and we need everybody now and not just about gay rights but about all the others, uh, whether it's you know, our trans friends, whether you know, people of color, whether it's immigrants, whatever it is, those issues matter now. So this is, you have your, you have your Stonewall 1969 moment right now to stand up and come out and march and fight back. We have to stick together, we have to help each other, we have to fight for each other. Do something and you'll feel better for it because you're helping. They gotta be proud. They gotta walk around and say, I am what I am. I'm a, I'm a homosexual, I'm gay, I'm a lesbian, I'm gay, and if you don't like it, screw you. We can't forget what happened at Stonewall and the people who stood up for what was right when they needed to most. Every day, there are people that need us to stand up for them. And it's the Marsha P. Johnsons, the Sylvia Riveras, and the Tree Sequoias that make me feel like we can do it too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am so honored to be at a place like this because without something happening here in 1969, I don't know if I would have been able to do something with you guys here on YouTube. I had such a great time talking to Stacy and Tree. I feel like I learned so much about Stonewall and the movement and their perspectives. If you wanna learn more about Stonewall and everything involved, everything will be in the description. This week's t-shirt is benefiting the Human Rights Campaign. If you wanna get one of them, the information is below, but it's only available for a limited amount of time, so be sure to get it quick. That's all I have for you guys today. I will see you guys soon. Okay, love you.